Imagine someone reaches out to you requesting to borrow some money. Now, this fellow probably is your friend and you would eventually lend the person the sum of 150,000 Naira. You both had this agreement that on or before 30 days, the person was going to return that money. So fast forward to 30 days later, 30 days plus one, two, three, four days, your funds have still not come forth. So you had to engage the person in another conversation and then you got excuses from the person explaining why he wasn't able to make the payment before the um, deadline and then he's apologizing and then he goes on to tell you um, he may not even be able to pay at this particular time. You have to give him an extension or he even tells you things are difficult for everybody so you have to understand. So you eventually notice that the person no longer picks up your phone calls the person replies his messages at will even though the person still lives his life normally still posts things on the social media and all that then you reach out to the person and say hey i know you're owing me the sum of 150,000 naira but how about do it this way pay me just 120,000 or 100,000 forgo the rest that make up that sum because this money was intended for something else it wasn't intended for someone someone actually owns it but i felt i trust you and um you know i feel you had the capacity so i gave it out to you as a loan why should we even get to that position well i'm not here to market any banking product to you even though i'm putting on the t-shirt of a commercial bank gt bank yeah i once worked there as a compliance officer gt bank now an arm of the guarantee trust holdings company I go by the name Coachman Solomons, and as always, I represent Campo the Light Network. So now, I painted an illustration. Now I'm going to turn it around because this will apply to a number of people that I'm speaking to now. You who borrows money from people and you do not repay back. Why? Why do you have to default? Why do you have to violate contracts? And these are friends that trust you. These are friends that gave you this money because they felt you had the capacity to, to pay and they felt they could trust you. So now you are trying to destroy that trust. You are ruining the friendship. So why would you do that? Now, these are things you need to know. First of all, don't take loan amounts that are more than what you can afford to pay. So why are you borrowing 150,000 naira when you know the maximum amount you can afford to earn within that period is 120,000 naira so it doesn't make sense at the end of the day you're going to come up with excuses like okay i was expecting a particular sum of money that money wasn't certain to come so why do you have to transfer this body into the person who helps you so you have to be open be honest if you know you don't have that source of income to, to, to conveniently pay the sum of 150,000 Naira. Don't borrow, borrow that amount of money. Go for something lower than that. And if you know your source of repayment is not close by, and then it may take a further time for you to repay. Open up to these people. And if, you're, if your friends are not cool with that and they can't you know, afford to give you that large amount of money for that long period of time, you may just still keep searching. Scroll down all the way through your contacts, you know, ask a lot of people, even if you have to ask 35 people, 40 people, till so you find that person, that person who, is, who will eventually understand you and say, okay, this money, I can really, I can give it to you as an assistant. I may not even want it back. And some friends will even give you this money and um, just hold on to it till whenever it's convenient for you to pay back. But the problem is we overlook certain friendships. There are certain people we feel shy to ask for assistance. And there are certain people that we just write them off and feel like these people can't, don't even have enough money. So I can't ask them. Sometimes our helps lie around these people. So once you do that, you're on a clean note. And then you reduce that risk of having issues then if it's looking like you won't be able to make up that payment before the deadline you have to pre-inform that person prior to the deadline itself let's say you have 25 days to go if you know that you won't be able to pay up that money as at that time you should let the person know i'm sorry i know i promised i was going to pay within 30 days now i just realized that something unforeseen came up and then it has he's going to hinder me from 
fulfilling that obligation. And then many friends will actually tolerate that and pardon you and say, okay, I'm going to give you an extension. But it's not an entitlement. You don't have to feel entitled to that extension if they are not going to give you the extension basically because they need that money for something else or that money was meant for someone else and they trusted you and lent you the money. Then you have to look for a way to pay back that money. And this will now take me to another point where I do not support people lending monies that are meant for someone else to somebody. So we don't, the dumbest excuse to come about for um, not repaying your creditors is saying, sorry, I'm expecting this sum of money from someone or I have someone who is owing me. Whenever the person pays me, I'm going to, that's so childish and that's um, really foolish. If you do that, you need to stop because uh, it doesn't make sense. That's high disrespect to the person who lent you the money and that is abuse of friendship and trust. So we need to be careful about these things in as much as we keep um, clamoring for um, change of leadership. Um, we need the right attitudes to be shown by our leaders in Nigeria. These things also apply to us. You need to be accountable. You need to be honest. Don't take people's trust for granted. And now there's this thing they always say. Whenever you give out a loan to a friend, you expose yourself to the risk of losing that friendship. And that is true. Then there's also a policy or a principle that a lot of people um, recommend. They say, don't give out an amount that you won't be able to do without. So if you know this is going to cost you a lot or it's for something else or someone else and it's going to give you a bad reputation or make you have sleepless nights, don't give out that loan. So if you are giving out 20,000 Naira to a friend, let it be that you are doing that because you can afford to forgo that 20,000 naira. Whether it comes to you or not, you're fine. It doesn't affect you. Even if the person had even asked for 150,000, you'd be like, you can say, sorry, bro, I won't be able to have to give you this loan of 150,000 naira. Take 20,000 naira. Once you're done with it, return it. Or you can tell the person, don't take this as a loan. Um, You know, it's an assistance. Just do whatever you have to do with it. So, so really important is maintaining your integrity. That is what you want to maintain, your reputation. Even though you are a borrower, it's not a crime to be in need. It's not a crime to take a loan. You can still maintain your respect because even the top businessmen in the world borrow. They have facilities running with banks. But then you just have to make your, you don't have to mess your integrity up, especially when you're dealing with friends who are not even going to collect interest on these loans. So... You know when you are dealing with a legally recognized financial institution and you default, you've exposed yourself to the law already and any action, legal action can be taken against you. So you know that's what's going to happen to you out there in the public. You shouldn't take advantage of your friends. Your friends shouldn't be having books for bad debts or making provisions for bad debts for people like you who are just friends. Come on, this is just an informal relationship. So you have to respect that. And... Um, I would still like to emphasize on separating the dealings you have with your creditors and your debtors. So you have a separate contract that exists independently with your creditor, the person who lends you money. So you have an agreement you're going to pay this person at a particular time. Then the contract agreement you have with your debtor is independent as well. So whatever happens to your debtor or whatever your debtor does to you, you shouldn't transfer it to your creditor. That is um that is really silly. So even if you're going to take your debtor to court, whatever, sort things out, get him arrested, that is fine. You just know how to settle your creditor. So you should always at every point in time be able to make payment as at when due, when you had already agreed and promised. So if your source of income, your original source of income is not um, coming forth, it's, it's not yielding any fruits, then you have to find an alternative. Even if you have to borrow from another source, yes, just settle these things. So you shouldn't hold on to people's funds. You shouldn't take people for granted. You shouldn't take your friends for granted. Yes, yeah, so I go by the name Coachman Solomons. And um, if this video appeals to you or if you learned a thing or two or you agree with me, come on, just support the video. Give it a thumbs up. You can 
share and um you know do well to subscribe to the channel the channel i represent here is um campo the light entertainment so just do well to hit the subscribe button thank you